Hey, welcome back. My name is Drew, and in this video, we're going to learn about lists and sequences in GeoGebra. So a list in GeoGebra is a single object that contains lots of similar objects inside it. So in this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how lists work and primarily how we can construct them quickly and efficiently using the sequence command. And by the end of it, I'll show you an example that takes all of the information that we've learned to put together a interesting mathematical exploration as well as a pretty neat picture. All right, let's do this. First, let's go over some of the basics for how lists work in GeoGebra. So a list is just a bunch of things put together, separated by commas and contained within curly brackets. So the most natural thing to make is a list of numbers. Let's say the numbers one, three, and five. If you put those between curly brackets, separated by commas, hit enter. It makes this thing called the list. And you can do lots of different things with lists. I usually use them as just a container for lots of similar organized pieces of information. Notice that when we hit enter, GeoGebra gave this list a name, L1. We can use that name and pick out different things from this list. So if I type in L1 and then put parentheses and type and then put a number between one and three, either one or two or three, as you saw, it'll give you the first, second, third, and so on elements from that list. Now you can put things into lists that aren't just numbers. Like we could even put functions into a list. So let's make a new list that has x, x squared, x cubed, and x to the fourth. Hit enter, it makes that list for it. It gives it a name. Um, it's hidden by default, but if we click the circle over here, it'll actually draw the graphs of all four functions in the list. And of course, if we wanted to pick out just one of them, let's say we want the fourth one, we could type in L2 and then in parentheses four, and it'll pick out X to the fourth, which is the fourth thing in this list. And it'll also draw the graph of that function for us. Okay, so there's a lot more things you can do with lists. Like there's different ways to index into them. You can take, you can split them in half. You can add things to them. I'm not gonna get into those that much, but if you're interested, look online for GeoGebra's manual and find the lists page. It's got a complete summary of everything you can do with lists and it's really useful when you're getting started. For now, actually what I wanna talk about for pretty much the rest of the video is the way that I make lists most of the time. Most of the time I don't type in curly brackets and then fill in each element of the list. I usually use the sequence command. The sequence command, if I type in sequence here, it will show us kind of five options for ways we can use it. And we're gonna explore all five of these, but you can think of the sequence command as a quick way to produce lists of a certain form. So let's explore these. If I just put in as my input to the sequence command, a single number, so say the number five, you can see it makes the list of integers starting from one and going to five. So this is a quick way to make a list of numbers if you know that you want your list to start at one and contain the integers all the way up to some point. If you don't want your list to start at one, that is what this second option is for. You specify a initial value such as three and a final value such as eight, and it will create the list of integers starting at three and going up to eight. And now let's suppose that you didn't want uh, integers only as your elements of the list. Let's say you wanna create the list of numbers between zero and one, but you want the elements of the list to be separated by say one tenth. Well, that is what that third option is for. This third one where we specify a start value, an end value, and an increment. So if we want that list, we would say we wanna start at zero, go to one, and for our spacing between subsequent elements of our list, we want point one. Do that, hit enter, and it makes the list of integers, um, kind of gets cut off here, but it does have ev all the integers between zero and one uh, spaced by one tenth. So those are quick ways to create lists of numbers. I don't use those all that much either, but they're there if you need them. They're good starting points for constructions. And now let's talk about the real way that I use sequences most of the time, which is to create lists of things using expressions. And this is the way, if you type in sequence, these last two, and pretty much this last one is the one that I'm gonna use most of the time. Um, this lets you specify an expression as your first input here. And then GeoGebra will build 
a list for you where each element of the list is that expression, but with a specific variable replaced with different numbers. So, okay, that might not be the best description, but let me show you what I mean. Hopefully through examples, you'll get a sense for how this works. So let's say that I wanna create a list of numbers, but I don't want them to be spaced by the same amount. Let's say I wanna create the list of powers of two. So I would type in two to the K. So K is a variable. And the way that the syntax works is I type in the expression that I want each element of the list to look like. After that, I need to specify what the variable is. So I'll just put K. So GeoGebra knows that to look for K in that expression. And then the next three inputs are what K should start at, where it should end, and then the increment. So let's have K start at one, go up to 10, and increment by one. Now, if I didn't put the one there as the increment size, it would default to an increment size of one, but I usually put it there anyways. And you can see, even before I hit enter here, but um, as I hit enter, it makes this list for us, and this list does have all of the powers of two between two to the one and two to the 10. So that's how the sequence works. It takes this expression here, two to the K, and it creates a list where everything in the list is of the form two to the K, and K increases from one to 10 throughout the list, separated by ones. Let's do another example. This time we're gonna do something a little bit more geometric. Let's make a bunch of lines uh, and I'll have all of my lines have slope one, so they'll be all of the form y equals x plus n. And I'm gonna say n is my y-intercept, and I'm gonna have n go from negative five to five, and I want it to be separated by one-halves. And so you can see it makes this list of equations, y equals x plus negative five, y equals x plus negative four and a half, even though it's writing it a little bit differently. And this is a really long list, I can't show all of it at once, but um, you can believe that it's there because it draws all, I think 21 of these lines at once. So it's a quick way to make lots of similar, in this case, lines, where the only thing that's different between them is their y-intercept. So let's hide this and zoom in. And now before I get into the next example, I wanna introduce you to the segment command which will draw the line segment between two points. So if I have the point uh, one half, one half, and one zero. So if I put those as inputs to the segment command, it draws the line segment between those two points. It also computes the length. That could be useful to you, maybe. Um, but really, I use this mostly to just draw line segments. So let's hide this. And just for example, I'm gonna make a sequence of line segments that all go from the point zero one to different points along the line x equals one. So it'll kind of look like a, uh, a fan of line segments. So we'll start our sequence. The expression is going to be a segment and all of my line segments, like I said, are gonna start at the point zero one. They're going to go to the point with x coordinate one and y coordinate a variable y. Next, we'll put in, we'll specify that our variable is y, and y is gonna go from zero to how about two, and I want my increment to be 0.1. So there we go. So we've made a bunch of different segments by letting the y coordinate of our uh, segment vary between zero and two with an increment size of 0.1. So that's to show you that this sequence command isn't restricted to just numbers. It's not even restricted to just like mathematical expressions. You can make geometric objects with sequences and that'll let you draw lots of things at once in your view. Okay, let's get rid of everything. And for the very last thing, let's do a bit of an extended example. And for this extended example, let's do something that we might do in say calculus, which is to take a function, take the graph of a function and approximate it by line segments. So to start, how about a function that we'll be approximating? I like f of x equals sine of x squared. Okay, cool. Let's zoom out so we can see this thing in the, the window where we wanna approximate this by line segments. 
And so we're gonna do our approximation between zero and five. So what that means is I'm going to take the interval between zero and five, cut it up into pieces, and then on each sub interval, we're gonna approximate the graph of this function by a line segment. All right, so I haven't decided ahead of time how many times I wanna subdivide my interval. So we're gonna actually let that be a slider. So I'm gonna call that variable N, capital N, I'll make a slider for n, and I will set this slider up with a lower bound of 1, an upper bound of how about 40, and a step size of 1. So n will always be a whole number between 0 and 40 as I move this slider. Now let's do that next step that I was talking about, which is to take the interval between 0 and 5 and subdivide it into pieces. This time we want to subdivide it into n pieces. So we can do that with a sequence. Let's call that sequence um, D for division, I guess. And we want the sequence D to contain all of the numbers between zero and five. But now let's think about the increment. If we want there to be N pieces, then the increment should be whatever the length of this interval is divided by N. So our increment should be five divided by N. And as I change N, it'll update this list for us. So that's pretty cool. Next, let's take our points D and draw the points on the curve that are lying above these numbers on the x-axis. So what I mean is um, for each element in this list of numbers, let's say uh, 0.625, I'm gonna take 0.625, plug it into F to get whatever the output of the function is there. And then I wanna plot the point that is 0.625 comma f of 0.625. And I want to do that all at once without having to write down a million different things. So I'm going to use a sequence to accomplish that. Let's call this sequence uh, p for points. And I'm going to make this a sequence of points. So I'm going to use sort of this last formulation of the sequence command. The expression will be a point, And the x coordinate is going to be something from this list d. So I'm really going to iterate through this list d. So the x coordinate, we'll call that d of k. And then the y coordinate of the point will be f of d of k. Make sure I close up the right number of parentheses here. So that's our point. And I want k to start at 1 so that it, the first thing that it does is it takes d of 1. So it takes this first thing in the list. And for the ending value, I want this to be the total number of things that are in this list. I think that is either n or I think it's n plus 1. Yeah. And then I want my increment size to be 1. But again, it defaults to that. So I didn't have to put that if I didn't want to. Cool. I hit Enter. And look, it made all of these points for us. These points are all guaranteed to be on the graph of this function. And as I increase n, it'll make, it looks like they're jumping around, but really I'm just making more and more points. So this is 30 points equally spaced horizontally along the graph of this function. Okay, let's rewind this back to 10. And now for the last step, I want to draw a line segment between each successive pair of points in this list P. So for that, we're going to use a third sequence, and we're going to use that segment command from before. So we'll do sequence. The expression will be segment. And remember, segment takes in uh, two points, the endpoints of the segment. And for this, I want them to be successive points from this list. So I'm going to do p of n, say, and then p of n plus 1. So lowercase n is going to start at 1 and go all the way up to capital N. And that will give me exactly all of these segments. When I hit Enter, it gives me all of these segments connecting these points. Cool. So that's the construction. We've done it. And now we can play with it. You can do things like see how good or bad the approximation of this function by line segments is, you know, based on the number of subdivisions, you know. Of course, as you increase n, it's going to make more and more segments. And actually, what we can do is we can hide our function, maybe, and we can kind of look at how good of a smooth curve this is as we increase n. So, OK, just for, you know, just for some, some math interest, you can see that the approximation is pretty good back where the original curve was smooth and not changing by all that much. But then over on the right hand side, it kind of gets more jaggedy. And we could, of course, fix that by letting ourselves take more subdivisions. So if I let n go all the way up to, you know, 400, 
yeah by the actually by the time I get to by the time I get to like 200 it looks pretty smooth already okay so that was I guess some mathematical interest but really the point here was the construction we started with a sequence of just numbers which were sort of the x values of this interval from 0 to 5 cut up into n little pieces and then we plotted all of the points along the curve using our initial list of x coordinates and and then the last thing we did was create a sequence of segments between sequential points in this list here and that gave us our discretized approximation of this graph all right that's going to do it for this one I hope that from at least that last exercise that we did, you can see a lot of the power behind the sequence command and how thinking with lists can let you make very complicated and very flexible constructions in GeoGebra. And really the key to this process is just figuring out a way to take whatever is in your head, whatever you want to make in GeoGebra and kind of decomposing it into pieces in a way that kind of works with this sequence command. It's definitely something that takes a little while to get used to, but once you get used to it, you can do pretty much whatever you want in GeoGebra. All right, I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun math content. Thanks for playing along and I will see you in the next video.